to do work in physics, we need engines. In ancient times, there were living engines. At first, humans used only their muscular power. Later on, they domesticated horses and other large animals. Horses used to carry people, plough the land and pump the water out of shafts and wells. A new era dawned with the invention of a steam engine. When a plant's owner was about to buy an engine, he usually asked how many horses the machine would be able to replace. If an engine could replace 10 horses, they said that its power equaled 10 units in horsepower. Power indicates what work an engine can do in a unit of time. It is said that an engine's power equals 1 watt if it does 1 joule work in 1 second. This unit is named in honor of James Watt, a Scottish inventor who introduced many important refinements into the design of a steam engine. This little electrical hoisting device is designed for lifting loads. The electrical engine's shaft makes 25 turns per second. For the load to go up not too quickly, the shaft's revolution is transmitted onto the pulley wheel of a larger diameter with the help of a ring rubber band. A thread winds onto the cylinder of the pulley wheel and lifts the load. This system is similar to chain gear of a bicycle. This load weighs 2.5 kilos, that is 25 newtons. We're going to lift it to 60 centimeters. To find the work necessary to lift the load, we have to multiply the force of 25 newtons by the displacement of 0.6 meters. We get 15 joule work. We launch the engine and the load is slowly going up. Halt! The load has been lifted to the required distance in 15 seconds. To find the power, we need to divide work by time, that is 15 joules divided by 15 seconds, which makes 1 joule per second, or 1 watt. Is the power of 1 watt much or little? To answer this question, let us find the power developed by a person ascending a staircase. A man whose weight is 80 kilos is climbing the stairs to the fourth floor. His weight equals 800 newtons, and the height to which he is ascending is 12 meters. Let's multiply 800 newtons by 12 meters and the work we get equals 9600 joules. To calculate power, we need to know the ascending time. If the pace is quick, one can climb to the fourth floor in 40 seconds. If we divide 9600 joules by 40 seconds, the power we get equals 240 watts which is 240 times greater than our engines. Power is work divided by time, but work is force multiplied by distance. Distance divided by time is speed. Thus, power is force multiplied by speed. Let's use this formula to calculate the power of an electric locomotive. The loco is pulling a 50 carriage train and each carriage weighs 60 tons. In this case, the whole train weighs 3,000 tons, or 3 million kilos. We can also say it is 30 million newtons. The locomotive power may reach one hundredth of the train's weight, which means the power of 300,000 newtons. Power is force multiplied by speed. If the train's speed is 20 meters per second, its power is going to be 6 million watts. This is exactly the power that an electric freight locomotive VL80 has.